this show reviews and discussion podcast. I am your host, Nolan Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Hello, I'm on a scavenger hunt for mystical artifacts, which we keep in a box for some reason. So, scavenger hunt, eh? I wonder what we're going to do for today. Mm, I don't know. Mm. But let us say we always stand on our principles. Yeah, it's a matter of principle, you might say. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. So, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 14, A Matter of Principle. In this episode, when Twilight Sparkle leaves Starlight Glimmer in charge of the School of Friendship, Discord gets frustrated and does his best to make Starlight's role impossible. So, before we head in, let's start off with first impressions. Silver, what do you think of said episode? Uh, it's something of a frustration. I liked... Parts of it, especially the introduction of these mystical artifacts, which I'd love to learn more about. But Discord is, how to describe, he was becoming better. He was becoming a more likable character, more sympathetic. But basically we see a return of sort of an old petty Discord, who's not even trying to accomplish a goal. He's just trying to sabotage someone else. And by the end, the moral seems to be saying... If someone's being rude or abusive towards you, it's probably something you did wrong, so apologize to them. It's like, what? No! No, that's a terrible message. That is true. That is true. Uh, well, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. Um, I, I highly enjoyed it. But like you mentioned before, the ending was kind. I won't say bad. I won't say like cluster. It, it had a confusing uh, what you would call this, uh, it had a confusing moral to it. Because, like you mentioned before, if your friend is feeling crappy, it probably is your fault. And uh, you should say sorry. But in all honesty, this episode is all over the place. And I think when we get into it, we'll probably talk more about it. Yeah, get, get to know more about this episode. So anywho, if you guys have not watched this episode yet... Uh, do pause here and go check it out. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode. So we start off the episode with Princess Twilight announcing that there will be a scavenger hunt or a spelligazah <laughs> hunt. Yeah? No? A uh, scavenger hunt. Yes. D- didn't they have a gimmick like spelliger hunt or something like that? Like, I-, I think it was a very interesting gimmick they call it. Let's see here. Let's see here. These are my size. Yep, a spellvenger hunt, which sounds more like you're trying to find the letters to spell a word. Yes. So, yeah, so uh, after uh, showing off the uh, magical relics, which is the amulet of Aurora, the talisman of Mirage, the helm of Yelkster, the crown of Grover, Knuckle Blocks. Knucklebuster or knuckle uh, knuckle blocksters? Knuckerbocker. Oh, knucklebocker's shell, Clover the Clever's cloak. So there are six uh, legendary artifacts. Very awesome, much much awesomeness because these artifacts are donated to Princess Twilight School from Princess Celestia. And by the way, I have to point out something here that all of these artifacts here are from different tribes or different uh, creatures. Uh, the Knuckle block shell is probably from the Hippogriffs. The crown of Grover, that's from the Griffins. The helm of Yalkster is from the Yaks, and so on. So I have to correct you, Norman. Sorry? It's Yixler. Yixler. It's, called, it's pronounced Yixler. All right, my bad. So anywho, uh, all of this artifact here comes from six different creatures. So how did Celestia get her hoofs on those things? Well, I imagine she has fantastic blackmailing skills after so many years. Oh, would you really like to know what really happened with King Grover? Oh, uh, I just like to think that every five years or something like that, Princess Celestia invites, or the leader invites everyone to play a game of poker. And these are the items that are being put for stakes. So, yeah. Maybe Celestia plays a game of strip poker. Oh, my. So, anyway. Yeah, baby. <laughs> So, anywho, Princess Twilight here mentions that, hey, um, there's going to be a scavenger hunt, and you're going to be paired up with a team of two. And my first OTP is going to be Silverstream and Gallus. So, you two, I ship them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
There you go. I'm just saying that they two make a cute couple. Yay. Oh, yeah, it's because later on we get to see them hugging. Oh, yes. Bush Th- hugs. Physical- Bush hugs. Physical contact. Oh, my gosh. <coughs> Yay. So, after announcing the OTPs, I can just imagine Twilight shipping her students with each other. Yay. <laughs> Maybe that's what Cadence does if she, com- if she comes by as a guest speaker. Yeah. We're going to pair you off. <laughs> I mean it. We're going to pair you off. <laughs> Yes, you will find love. I'll make it. Anywho, the students lagas at Twilight. And Twilight says, wait, uh, you don't agree with my OTP? Well, you're wrong. My OTP is canon. Yeah. And Yona just says, uh, why is pony butt vibrating and blinking? And they should know better than to ask a mayor such a personal question. True that. But we all see that. Oh no, Twilight has been summoned by the map. She rushes to her palace and sees that everybody's been summoned to a far off distance land and oh my goodness this has to be really really important oh no so we're all doomed the world is gonna end it's another party of shadows won't oh my god oh no but the the big trouble here or the biggest worry here on everybody's mind is oh no no teacher to take care of our school how that no that's bad that's that's really really bad Pinkie Pie just mentions, hey, uh, let's take our students with us. We can take a road trip. Yeah. She does say that, and it's not a great idea. You never know what kind of peril you're going to find. True that, especially on your crazy adventures. The last time you had a crazy adventure, you were almost sold to this mole rat. And before that, when all six of you went on a mission, you well, the first group mission, you ended up nearly getting brainwashed by a cult. Mm-hmm. And the second one, you went to confront a dark force... That threatened all of Equestria. Oh, and, kinda. And your sort of re- true, true. Maybe. And your first first one was you were facing a dragon. So yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So no adventure for children. And Twilight says, "No problem, guys. I predict that this might have happened, and I got backup plans upon backup plans. Here's the list. And in the next scene, Twilight goes to Starlight and says, "Starlight, baby." You're going to be acting Hitmare. Here's the list of everything. Just follow through and you'll be good. So, are we clear? Clear. And if you've got no idea what to do, Spike here will help you. So, okay, bye-bye. I'm going to go adventures. Whee! Although, I could see Twilight's addressing Starlight as Starlight Baby two different ways. Starlight Baby. Starlight Baby. (laughs) Oh, no. You, the ship, you, the shippers decide. Oh no. But anywho, once uh, the main six run off to adventure, oh, twice Starlight and Spike just says, okay, uh, what do we do now? And Discord pops up saying, oh, they will be missed. I, I, I can't bear it. And yeah, the Starlight just says, yo, Discord, what are you doing here? Like, literally, what are you doing at school? And Discord vents his anger saying, oh, I think this is the first time I've been here since the school opened, since friends and family day happened, and graduation happened. Mm-hmm. It is true, for being friends with this guy, he has not been included in their lives very much. Can you imagine if he were on hand if Na- while Naysay was trying to cause trouble? Oh, oh my goodness, that, that is just bad. That is just bad on so many levels. I don't know. I could see the head of the Equestrian Education Society uh, being turned into a chicken or something, or thinking he's a chicken. But that will prove his point that the school is not safe. It's hard to it's hard to be pretentious and say I was right when you're too busy going. Mark, 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 mark. Well, it worked for a chicken in Yakuza Zero, so yeah. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> you gotta watch the video, man. The chicken became a manager of a store and. Delivered, never before seen results. Dude, that's clucked up. <laughs> I know. So, anywho, this card here says, All right, Starlight, I'll become hit mayor or hit Draconicus of this school, and it'll be cool. For my first rule is gravity is optional. And second rule is we have a mascot which is a ambidextrous lemur, something like that. And Starlight says, No, plan bad. Um, Twilight put me in charge, and we're going to do it her way. 
Let's see, an ambidextrous marmoset. Ah, yes, marmoset, my bad. Kind of wondering, who's under that costume? That's what I want to know. Help me! He kidnapped me! I'm thinking it could be the mailman. He hasn't returned until the, the holiday special. Indeed. Oh, boys. But anywho, Discord says, oh, you don't want me to help? Okay, I'll do stuff something later. Yeah. Yeah. But st- I love that Starlight says, oh, we're all saving Equestria buddies, as if that's a frat society. Oh, yeah. It's like, we save we save Equestria every other Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but anywho, we move on to the next day, and Discord does trouble by, well, changing Twilight's uh, office and saying that he's going to be in charge and whatnot and he's going to help and oh my god discord's brand of help is not great it's not great at all so yeah this this is where discord starts to lose uh sympathy i mean discord is a trickster he likes to change the situation to fit his needs it's usually to get what he wants though if you're lucky a trickster might get you to realize what's really important by taking away what's currently there not so in this case this is just him being unpleasant for the sake of it my only solace in this is that he validates the twitter mites might actually be a real thing yeah. Huzzah! yeah yeah and also i do like the uh, twilight wig when he put it on starlight they look similar like oh my goodness they they just change main models like oh my goodness <laughs> maybe starlight's saying no do not prove Ember right. We do not look the same. But you do. <laughs> uh, but but that species is. But look at that. Like, Discord is showing the truth. But but anywho, but anywho. Discord has a plan, like, um, delivered cheese and whatnot. And you know what? Discord is just Discord. So I'm just going to kind of run along because uh, it gets a bit repetitive with what's going on. So... Discord already hired um, substitute teachers, and one of those teachers are Iron Will. And oh my goodness, this is fun! I I like Iron Will because Iron Will here is one of those characters where, when done right, he could be stupid silly. And <laughs> uh, what was his line? Making friends, something like that. <laughs> I I need to read the transcript because the transcript here is good. Or you have it uh, before me. <laughs> they call it making friends because you have to make creatures be your friends. <laughs> Show me what you've got, Yak. <laughs> if you're quiet, I don't buy it. And, of course, the greatest drill sergeant line of all, I've heard pudding that's more convincing. <laughs> oh, it's like, what was it again? Oh, uh, it, if you're quiet, I don't buy it. Like, oh, well, that was good. That was good. But still, um, Yona getting really aggro here. And screaming and scares every creature. Oh, no. With good reason. She does have the momentum and, well, to put it delicately, the mass to break through walls. <laughs> True. Flying tackles from a yak probably don't end well. Oh, God, no. Go, oh, no, no, no. So, next substitute teacher is Cranky Doodle Donkey. And they're heading off to a field trip. What? Honestly, I, this is a different side of Cranky. He's being a complete jerk. He's always been cranky but he's always been uh respectful now he's spewing tea in gallus's face true i don't know this this is um you know what i got no i i got no idea what to say it could be funny because he's being the jerk mini pants but like you mentioned before we do we didn't really see him like this but what i want to point out is it's funny because in the question goes, Cranky is a teacher, so this is kind of funny. <laughs> I just find it funny because Cozy Glow is made to suffer before she's done her deed. Indeed. <laughs> suffer, oh demon child. You deserve this. Yep. So, anywho, next up is a tree. Yes, a tree. Well, it's a very important class on the branching possibilities. <laughs> I know. It's blooming with potential. And... The students just can't leave the class. I know. Uh, it's kind of hot stuff. Or maybe it's a math teacher teaching them the square root. <laughs> uh, yes. But anywho, uh, talking about this tree, 
Uh, said tree is a dragon sneeze tree because uh, every dragon has a allergy to said tree. Hey, they, they sneeze fire, so no, not, not good. Not good at all. At this point, everything just becomes chaotic. Like, the student body is panicking, Yona is crashing through walls, and Starlight here just says, stop it, Discord. This is not what Twilight wants. This is just making things hectic. Like, this is not how the school should be run. And you should leave. And he leaves. Yep. Oh, wait, he gets his inner firefly on. I am a leaf on the wind. Watch me soar. Yeah, and yeah, his plan is not over yet. So, in the next day, Starlight officially invites the subs. And substitute teachers are Spitfire, the Great and Powerful Trixie, and Mod Pie. So, this substitute teacher will be taking over for the absence of their teachers. So, yay. I have to wonder, how did Spitfire get called in on this i mean she's rainbow dash's boss i get the relation but i find it funny because starlight didn't even know what a wonderbolt was true but i'm guessing that um starlight here got contact like look at recommendation list from twilight's list yes i think the most obvious answer here is from twilight's list of to do and substitute so spitfire was one of them and the rest are kind of friends of starlight so yeah yeah, I'm, I'm I'm betting Spitfire was just from a list because there's no way Twilight would recommend Trixie for this role. Oh, true. And Maud. Maud would be a difficult sell because what could she teach besides rock? Endurance, strength training. That's um, Spitfire's camp. But anywho, after introducing... Ooh, ooh. Spitfire versus Maud, hoof wrestling contest. Ooh. Go. Got no idea. Yes. Got no idea, man. Does a hard sell. But, eh. Rock hard? <laughs> no comment. But anywho, we move into the first class. And first class is about magic. And yay! Hello, fellow kids. How is it hanging? <laughs> what up, dogs? I'm hip, yo. Let's get jiggy with it. Oh, why can't Safi be here to hear my abonics? I know. This is the one time the show actually calls for me to do it. I know. Shazam. I know. Maybe she. that's why she didn't came. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, th- this is a meme from, what was it again? Brooklyn Nine-Nine, was it? Mm, I'll have to take your word for it. I can't quite recall. Yeah, because there's a link here and it's straight to YouTube. And if I press on it, it might be playing in the background. So, you know what? I can do it because we have separate tracks. Give me a second. I want to see what it says. Well, this is from the 30 Rock special. Ah, yes, 30 Rocks. So, yeah. Steve Buscemi. Yeah, it was that meme. <laughs> nice. But anywho, Discord, Discord's like me trying to relate to the young people. What's up, my young person? <laughs> like you, I drink my yogurt from a tube. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Trixie asks Discord, what are you doing here? And Discord just says, I'm a student of the School of Friendship, and I am here to learn with the young kids. Word. Let's get chiggy with it, yo. Yeah. Uh, and Trixie here says, okay, well, whatever, as long as you don't disturb class. So, in today's lesson, I am going to teach you all about magic. And what better way to learn about magic by performing magic? Huzzah! And before she could even start, there is a phone call. And it seems that Discord got a call from his mobile Banana phone. Ring, ring. Banana phone. Do, 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 do. Sorry, that just doesn't have appeal. <laughs> you know, that song is full of puns. Oh, by the way, fun fact. Uh, Michael Krieber worked on that song with Rafi. E. Gads. Does it mean Michelle Krieber? Michael, uh, the father. Oh, the father. Okay. Yep. Fun fact. Anywho, as Trixie tries to perform her magical deeds, this card sabotaged by, well, the classic pull a rabbit out of your hat deal doesn't really work for Trixie because every time when she pulls something out, it comes out different, starting with a flying pig. And Derpy! Yay! Derpy is best pwn! Nice cameo. It's like Stan Lee. You know, now that I think about it, Starlight needs a Pegasus friend. She's got an earth pony and a unicorn for buds. She needs a Pegasus bud. True that. True. There we go. I recommend Derpy for uh, Starlight's friend. Yep, yep. 
Let's, it will work. It will work. Yeah, we need to find her. Maybe maybe next season. But anywho, last item that she pulled out was a Ursa Major. What the hell? That is dangerous on so many levels. Discord. That's bad. And we leave her talking uh, mobile plans. What is that? <laughs> and I'm just surprised that Trixie knows how to answer her phone. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure... You could have an entire commercial of Trixie just going through Equestria. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? All of us hear the great and powerful Trixie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anywho, let's hit on to the next uh, teacher, and that's Spitfire. And Spitfire is teaching gym. So, all right, all right. That's good, that's good. The student body kind of ran their laps and feels tired now. And Coach Discord comes in saying that you need to run laps. And, oh, no, you're not going to run laps because you're tired? Well, here's a motivator, a bugbear chasing you. Now run before he stings you. Ha 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 I'm endangering student bodies. That's funny because I say so. Yeah, sorry we all just having a f- grand time watching students' lives be put at risk. Honestly, the fact that the school survived today is a miracle. True that. And I just love how Sandbar here says, Coach, um... We, we can't run. Uh, we're kind of tired from previous running activities. And Discord just says, I'm going to be honest with you, kid. I don't care. Run. If not, the bear's going to eat you. Honestly, I feel like I've had gym teachers like that. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. So, anywho, Yona fell down and it's going to be eaten by the bugbear. Oh, no. And a Kamehameha comes and blasts the bear. And it seems that Starlight had enough. Doing acts of violence to the school, that's one thing. But endangering the students, that's crossing the line, Discord. That's crossing the line. That's not cool. And she's right. So true. And in a moment of frustration here, the two friends argue. And Spike, being the voice's reason stands in between them and tries to calm things down because Discord had a point, Starlight had a point, but egos were in the way. And, well, the word, what's his problem or what's Discord's problem? And, yeah, Discord just mentions that uh, my problem, how is the fact that Twilight uh, decided to put an incompetent, power-hungry unicorn in charge of her school is my problem. Like, that kind of stung because... Oh, that, that's that gone too far. That's crossing the line. Like, no, you should not do that, both of you. And with that, Starlight does a Kamehameha wave that banishes Discord. Oh, no. Uh, no, it murders Discord. That is full-on death. <laughs> so, uh, this Discord got banished by Starlight's laser beam. And, yeah, yeah, um... Things are going to get worse. Things are going to get worse. Although, I was talking with some other reviewers about this. The fact that Discord is killed and yet comes back to life, does that make him Pony Jeebus? <laughs> I doubt it. Come on. It's Discord. He will never get killed. How could you... Oh, but come on. On the third scene, he rose again in fulfillment of the script. Sure. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. So, anyway, we move on to the Spellvenger Hunt. Yay! So, here's the thing. Uh, you wear a watch, you point it at the item, it glows green, it ticks, that means you got a point. Yay. Now, both of you have to do it and go, go, go. Find your teammates. So, our teammates are Ocellus and Smolder. Nice pairing, nice pairing. And the first item on their list is the helm of Yixler. Yixler. Yixler, yes. The helm of Yixler. And they found it in no time. Yay! And by the way, Starlight is spying on them. Yay! Much, much awesomeness. The fact that Twilight has a has a uh, telescope that can see everything happening within the school raises some privacy questions. Won't lie. I'm a little creeped out by that. It's like, Twilight? Twilight? What are you doing? Why are you doing this, Twilight? Do you have a line to the bathroom, Twilight? Oh, no. Th- this is the anti-hallway uh, duty where she catches ponies who don't have hallway pass. <gasps> Just feel like she's a, like the robot Santa from Futurama. I saw that. <laughs> but anywho, 
after our heroes of Celis and Smolder discover their first prize or first relic, uh, things go on haywire because suit of armor coming to life, trying to kill them. What? Also, do you, do you think anyone would call Twilight on cultural appropriation? She put a yak helm on a pony suit of armor. And the uh, example for how to use your magical spell watches feature two ponies. That's not very PC. Feature two ponies? They're dragons and... Yeah, but the projection. Ah, yes, that. Well, it's... I'm challenging their preconceptions because that makes me look morally superior. Oh, no, you... That was an example. But anywho, Starlight and Spike panics because that's not supposed to happen. So we head on to our next team, um, Silverstream and Gallus. They're awesome. They kind of know where the second item is because, well, uh, Gallus noticed where Spike hit the item. And the item is behind a painting of a griffin. Yay. Subtle much. Yes, subtle. I love Gallus in this scene. He's got the street smarts of just tracking Spike, but then he actually knows the history, and it's like, hey, this guy's actually pretty bright. He just likes to cover it up. True, true. But at the same time, too, it has to do something with Griffin, so he got to know Griffin stuff, right? Actually, no. I mean, most Griffins seem very apathetic towards their own kind. Oh, my. A little ounce of historical pride might actually go a long way uh, to reuniting their kingdom. And I'll say it right now, of all the characters, I could see Gallus rising to become the new Griffin leader. I would say Gilda. I don't know. It's, it's up for... Gilda could be the interim leader while Gallus is training. Yeah, it's like what? Gilda will be the second Hokage while Gallus is training to become the fourth or fifth? You went with a Naruto reference. I know. <laughs> I, I can't... Believe it. <laughs> uh, <that's> the <laughs> but anywho, after discovering and after doing the scanning thing, painting comes to life and chase our heroes. In fact, this is a Ghostbusters scene. Yeah. <laughs> Although, riddle me this. Who is this changeling and why would she have a powerful amulet if she's not Chrysalis? <sighs> See, this is one of those questions where I would like to ask the showrunners because it, my theory here is that before Chrysalis reign, the Changeling had a rotating leader like how certain beehive works where they coronate the new, the new queen and after that's being done, they prep for the next queen to well take over her place and so on. But Somehow Chris Liss just managed to stay longer and Thorax became long. Hmm. Who knows? But then but then we get to a whole new level of confusion. Okay. Equestria Girl's Forgotten Friendship mm -hmm. stated Clover the Clever was male. He. Mm -hmm. They used he. But this painting of Clover the Clever is a very horrifying female unicorn. That eyeshadow should make rarity whale. Is that even Clover the, uh, Clover the Clever? Is, is that even her? Like, because I, if you're referencing it because of the cape, I'm not sure. It could be that this is a pony who inherited Clover's cape and all the terrible fashion that goes with it, but I don't know. Good question. We're dealing with two conflicting sources of info, and I do not know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a... Good question that's brought up. It's very confusing because in the Heartswarming Eve play, uh, Clover the Clever was played by Twilight Sparkle. And in said flashback, it was Twilight Sparkle. And like you mentioned before, in Equestria Girls Forgotten Friendship, Clover the Clever was a stallion. So a lot of contradictions going on here. But hey, um, it won't be a pony show without any contradictions. So yay. Which Clover the Clever do you like most? You, the fans, decide. Yay. Star Swirl had like three different presentations and personalities throughout the comics. So true, so true. But anywho, um, while all this panic and chaos is happening, Starlight sees Discord, a ghost of Discord, and Spike says, didn't you banish Discord? And Starlight says, apparently his ghost is immune to my banishing spell, so let's just solve this problem now. 
Meanwhile, uh, Discord is trying to kill Yona. Oh, yeah. And after well, this kind of revelation that Sandbar is talking about, about stuff, um, Floor becomes quicksand. Oh, no. Oh, no. Our heroes are going to be dead. Oh, no. At least he didn't try the, the Floor is Magma uh, game. <laughs> the Floor is Lava. The Floor is Lava. Oh, no. The Floor is Lava. No. But anywho, yeah, all of our Creature 6 group together and Starlight comes in and just stops it. Like, says that uh, Discord, stop this. This is not fun anymore. Or this is not, this is bad. This is bad on you. And uh, Discord pops in and says, hey, look, I won the prize. What did I win? And Spike just says, you got detention. And with that, Discord says, that's a terrible prize and starts to throw all the item away. Oh no. Which Spike, of course, rescues because he really is the he is the rock in this episode. He's the one trying to bridge the gap between them and be the helpful assistant. And of course, being the one with the most physical abuse because some things never change. I never, know. ever, 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 ever. True that, true that. Anyway, Starlight here confronts Discord and apologizes for her actions because she wasn't thinking like a friend or she was thinking more like a headmistress rather than a guidance counselor that didn't make sense but long story short starlight apologizes to discord because of how crappy she treated him and technically she should have done better than this and with that starlight invites discord to become vice principal was it right vice principal yeah yeah but I'm with Sandbar saying I'm totally confused. This is a terrible message, especially to say in front of the students. I mean, okay, she wasn't thinking like a counselor. Well, guess what? She wasn't in the role of counselor. She was looking out for the school. And that means she can't play favorites. Yep, that is true. That is true. There are lots of things I like about this episode, especially the introduction of these magical elements and a little bit of history for each species, but this ending, woo we this ending really undermines a great deal of it. I know. It's, okay, I understand what's going on. I understand what we are trying to present here. And it is okay, for lack of a better word. But, you know, I'm going to save that for the discussion part of this episode. So, um, hugs were given, um, everybody was giving high fives, until the main six come back and Discord, I can't believe you. You use a spell that make our butt vibrate and glow just so we will be out of the school. Like, Discord, that is not good. Although the shipping with Fluttershy, that offers so many possibilities. Oh my. How so? Oh my. Oh my. Well, you see, when you can make the flank a uh, rump a rubbin. Oh my. So, yeah, um, Twilight just says, thank you, Starlight, for keeping the school in peace and taking care of it while I was gone. So, yeah, and they all walk off trying to re forget that this ever happened. And Spike just says, <laughs> Discord, I, it seems that your role as vice principal is not valid anymore. Ha 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 ha. And Discord says, I even made business cards. Oh, no. And they all they just say Discord, Discord, Discord. Yeah. Which is what happen which is what happens when you watch an episode like this with KP. Oh no. But like I say, it's a whoopa. <laughs> and episode ends. So yeah, um let's head into discussions. So the ending. Ay ay ay. It's okay, like I mentioned before, I understand what they were trying to go for here. And it's one of those things where talk to your buddy, like talk to him or them and work things out and in this scenario here i could have seen them working together like starlight and discord planning out their school things or whatever and or make the spell adventure hunt much more interesting because you add that element of chaos into it you're gonna have a lot of fun that's for sure but now nah, because you didn't things went awry because discord didn't feel like he was part of the crew or team, which is kind of true because he is a friend and nobody invited him to the opening, to the Family and Friends Day and to the Cutie Marks Crusaders graduation and whatnot, which kind of sucks. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I too understand the idea of talking out a frustration and and asking why someone is acting out. But here's the thing: St- Spike did ask. He said, "What's your problem?" And rather than just say, "I feel left out or abandoned," he throws an insult at Starlight in front of her students. As far as I'm concerned, Starlight was more than justified in banishing him from school grounds. Which is a bit extreme. I don't think it is. The the whole banishment of the school grounds? Yeah, that was a bit extreme. After he endangered the school class several times? Yeah, true that. But still, I I would have thought that, or I personally would have think that they could have done it privately in the back room or something like that. But that's what I would like to see. But hey. Discord seemed intent on dragging this into the public light. And so, honestly, if he wants to make a public spectacle of him harassing, he shouldn't be surprised to be turned into a public spectacle of this won't be tolerated. Uh, true that, true that. But in all honesty, in all honesty, I, I won't say that this episode is bad. I, I'd say that this episode was a lot of fun. It's just that when you present your lesson or you present your ending in a way that is kind of questionable it kind of deducts a few points out of your total score yeah i had a lot of fun with with uh this episode but it's just the ending that you're like ah that's really that's really hitting below the belt there yeah it it didn't hit the mark like it it had a lot of good things going for it but said ending there was you know i i do like the part where Starlight here apologizes and kind of be the bigger pony out of the situation and uh, presented Discord with a role of assistant VP, which is kind of cool, but it came out of, how would I say, desperation rather than uh, understanding. Or just sort of buying his cooperation. Yeah, it feels that way. It feels that way. But uh, another thing to point out is the artifact that was used for the uh, spell venture hunt. Those were the same artifact that will be used in the ending. I don't know how it relates, but it's there. Actually, they have several roles. We have the Amulet of Aurora, which can apparently control tidal waves or tsunamis. Uh, That will be used to mend the rift between Rarity and Rainbow Dash in the end in Friend. And then, yes, these artifacts will be used to empower the student six and at the same time, drain all the magic from Equestria, which that's like, how? But these th- this is their introduction and they will serve an important role. And I would love to know more about the uh, historical figures behind them. True that. Not just is Clover the Clever a, a guy or a gal, but also what is up with that changeling? I want to know more about that changeling. Yeah. Or what do we call this? The horn. Like, what was that all about? Or... You know, there's a lot of things. Or, or the crown from the Griffins. Like, what was that all about? But hey, uh, that is possibly an idea for next uh, season. But yeah, for this current one, it's kind of... And, and well, I think we should take our leaves. So, Silver, final thoughts? It could be a fun episode, but you've got to brace yourself for the ending and just say, okay, not every ending's morals really jive. If you said, who do you think was more in the right, I'll definitely say Starlight. Totally agree, totally agree. And as for me, fun episode, right entertaining. Ending is a bit lackluster. But I would say there was a lot of value in this episode. If I were to give it a score out of 10, I would give it an 8 to a 7 because of the ending. And that's about it. So, anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's show? Well, having just seen an episode all about these historical figures, I... I think it's about time we took a look back at the Legends of Magic. And so we are going to look at the Legends of Magic starring uh, Mage Meadowbrook, Ninja Healer Extraordinaire. Ha-cha! Yeah, yeah. Ha-cha! So that will be next week's review. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo and Silver. Where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the YouTubes under MLP Silver Quill. You can also use that same screen name for uh, Deviant Art, where you can find a, a list of comics 
and other drawings. And you can find me on Equestry Daily every Wednesday with an editorial or comic review. Go catch out the comic review because he did a good job with those. It was really awesome. Oh, thank you. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyForLife.com. Also, do subscribe to this podcast here right now on iTunes and Stitch Radio. You know what we do. We talk about Pony episodes, comics, and also movies. Sometimes we like to divert by talking about other things. Miraculous Lady is one of them. And also comic books. DC, Marvel. That's what we like to do. If it interests us, we talk about it. Uh, Movies. Yes, movies. We like to talk about movies. I think the one that I always crack up is at Kung Pao Into the Fist. Much awesomeness. You guys should check it out. Wee! <laughs> oh, you go there. I go home. Anyway, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Master of Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. Anyway, I have been Norman Senzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll, guys, catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. I do wonder how Principal Snitch would work in this universe. Snitch? Stitch? Principal Cinch. Yes, her, yes. And she would be like, we, this school must afford its reputation. Reputation! What reputation? Discord ruining it? This is highly ineffective. You should kill him more, Starlight. Kill him bad. Oh, no.